Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane and before we get into the video, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's taken the time to watch, comment, and like the videos and a special thank you to those who have subscribed to the channel. I really do appreciate it. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. It really does help a small YouTube channel like myself. On this channel, we cover dividend growth investing, stocks I'm watching, stocks I'm avoiding, options if I do any from week to week. I do portfolio updates like this every Sunday, so you can see exactly what's going on in my portfolio all out in the open. I'll show you every position that I own, any positions that I've added to, any I've sold, and like I said, I have been doing some options, not every week, but whenever they get assigned, I will share those as well. I do a stock pick of the day series Monday through Friday, where I take a look at a stock that is pulled back on the day to see if we can see any value there. Sometimes I do uh, stocks that are suggested, suggested by subscribers. So if you have any suggestions for stocks you'd like me to cover in that, go ahead and drop that down in the comment section down below. I do a series on the stocks to buy for the month, stocks I'm looking at for the next month as we end one month or enter a new month, stocks that I'm going to look to add to my portfolio or think there's value in. And I do a dividends paid for the previous month. So usually at the beginning or right at the end of a month, I'll cover all the dividends paid out for the, those months. So if you are a dividend growth investor, again, hit that subscribe button down below. Drop a comment. Let me know what positions are in your portfolio that we might have in common. Go ahead and watch the video. You'll see my portfolio at the end, and then you can see what we have in common. And let me know what activity you had in your portfolio. Did you add any? Did you sell any stocks? Is your portfolio starting to head towards the green? Definitely mine is. I know this week was a, a very good week overall. But this video is a portfolio update video for the week. We did add $902 in new capital. So let's jump right in and see what activity there was in my portfolio this week. So as I mentioned, options is the first one we usually cover. I did not have any options plays this week. The Williams-Sonoma option that we jumped in last week did expire on Friday, but no new options were assigned. I did have a couple. I tried to uh, throw some hooks out there, but no one bid on. So that is just the way options go. You can't force someone to take an options contract. So no options for this week. Now we did have several companies paid out dividends this week. We had dividends paid out on the 6th. The 7th and the 9th, all told, total here, $287.44 paid out in dividends. Passive income added $12.76 cents from the new positions here. And Johnson & Johnson was the first one paid out on the 6th. Ticker J&J &J out of the healthcare sector, they paid us $93.33. I do have the drip set, so whenever any position in the portfolio pays out dividends, it automatically goes back in and picks up more shares. So Johnson & Johnson, that $93.33, picked up 0 0.59015 shares. <coughs> Excuse me. Lionel Basil paid us out on the 7th of June. $139.17, ticker LYB, out of the material sector, and that $139.17 picked up 1.53753 shares of Lion do Basel. Pfizer was the next one paid out on the 9th there, right at Friday, end of the week, $54.94, ticker PFE, another one out of the healthcare sector, and that $54.94 picked up 1.3994 shares, adding to the existing Pfizer position. Again, in total, $12.76 was added in passive income. This is that snowball in effect. Now the portfolio is generating cash flow and picking up new shares, adding to itself, right? That's that snowball uh, in effect there. Now we only added on one day, middle of the week, really, we added that $902.10, you know, a little bit of change there. And with those new funds, we added two more shares to our Johnson & Johnson position. This one had really pulled back, was down, I had been getting it as low as 154, but really love it under 160. So we picked up those two shares at 157.96. Ticker J&J, &J, again out of the healthcare sector. Kraft Heinz finally pulled back below my cost basis. So we added six more shares there. Ticker KHC is out of the consumer staple sector. We picked up those shares at $36.99. My cost basis is mid $37. So I think it's like 37, 38 or somewhere around there. So anytime a position dips below my cost basis, and this one is one I've been wanting to add to, so I'm hoping that it stays down so I can continue to add here to this one. Sabani Stillwater, I have been adding consistently almost every week, I think 10 to 20 shares, uh, still below $8 here, so I'm going to continue to add here. 
ticker SBSW. This is a mining company out of the material sector. I just feel there's a lot of value right here right now. We picked up those shares at $7.34. AT&T, this one is going to, you know, cause a little bit of ruckus. I think with some people really uh, are emotional about this one, held it for a long time, and then they cut the dividend. And I think that really uh, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. I completely understand that. I actually got into it after they cut the dividend. Uh, so not as big of an issue for me, but it has really pulled back recently. Four, I added, so I added four more shares to ticker T out of the communication sector at $15.87. And another one out of the communication, Verizon Communications overall has really pulled back lately. So I am taking advantage of the high yields on these ones. Ticker VZ out of the communication sector, and I picked up four more shares that, there at $34.84. <clears throat> Excuse me. And these new positions at $902.10, picking up these new shares here added another $43.28. Now, the $43.28 in passive income plus the passive income provided by the dividends equals $56.04 in additional passive income added to the portfolio over the next year. Again, that is the snowball in effect me adding new capital like i did here the dividends paying out and picking up more shares like we saw there so that is the dividend snowball overall really nice to see let's keep going here we're going to run through these sector weights real quick communication is sitting at 8.39 percent of the pie right now consumer discretionary makes up nine nine percent of the portfolio Consumer staples, again, really want to add here. I'd like for uh, Procter & Gamble to pull back too, but we'll take advantage of the Kraft Heinz pullback as long as we can. Want to juice this one up here a little bit. 5.48% of the portfolio. would like to build this out a little bit more to even this portfolio out a little bit. Energy sector is 7.42% of the portfolio. Financials, 11.88% of the portfolio. Healthcare makes up 14.16. Industrials, 8.48%. Technology is sitting at 9.16% of the portfolio. Materials, 11.16. Still no utility companies in the portfolio, though I was looking at UGI for a little bit. I think it's starting to rebound a little bit, but overall, uh, the natural gas and, and uh, propane seem to have really pulled back lately. So I don't know. I might, might uh, add to this sector. I might just wait. I might even look at a, maybe a, a, a utility ETF. I know I don't have any ETFs, but that might be a space that I look to add an ETF overall. I don't know. I haven't really looked into them yet, but might be where I'm headed with that one. And REITs and real estate is making up the largest chunk of the portfolio for now. I will say I have a uh, covered call on uh, OHI, which is a REIT which will be expiring next Friday. And right now it is in the money. So it looks like I'm going to be, those shares will be called away and I will pick up about $5,800. And I am really heavily considering taking those funds and potentially uh, reallocating them to Qualcomm was one that I was looking at out of the uh, information technology sector, but it is starting to run. It was down significantly under $116 whenever I started looking at it. And I was kind of waiting for this one to pop and maybe use that money to roll over. But I looked at it yesterday and it started to run up and it's up to 119. So I really wanted it under 118. So I don't know if it continues to run. I might not do that. I might just look to roll that money back into OHI, maybe do a cash secured put and try to pick those 200 shares back up. But we will see what happens next week. I know the Fed is going to uh, let us know if they're going to raise rates again and if they do i think the market's going to really drop so maybe it won't be called away but right now it is in the money so we'll see what happens next friday and still no ets but like i mentioned i may actually look at utilities as a place to throw an etf in so i have some exposure to that sector and i don't necessarily have to get into any e utilities uh, individual companies just go after the entire utility market or at least uh, whatever companies are in the utility ETF that I look at. We'll see if I do that. Uh, maybe I'll spend some time this weekend taking a look at uh, ETFs in the utility sector. Or if you have suggestions, drop them down below and let me know if you have any ETFs in that sector and which ones you like and why you like them. Now, a quick way to look at the portfolio sector weights, uh, a different way. Obviously, you see the uh, percentages here that's that's this column but you can also see the dollar amount allocated to each sector as well that's what this column is here you can pause this and go through that if you'd like and here it is full portfolio reveal this is every position in my portfolio the ticker for the positions total shares i own current price the market value 
my average share price, my, my cost uh, price here, how much I have into the position, total return, whether I'm up or down, right? If it's in the red, it means I'm down. Percent return, same thing. If it's in the red, it means I'm down. Sector that the company sits in, whether it's a quarterly, monthly, or semi-annual payer here. Current dividend yield, my yield on cost, the portfolio weighting. So what we saw on the previous slide was the sector weighting. So this is by individual holding, right? Estimated annual income, month that the dividends are paid out. The dividend growth, at least from uh, the most current year-over-year -year dividend growth. And the 50, whether it's within 15% of its 52-week low is one of the metrics that I look at for purchasing or adding to a stock. So you can see I've done the math here. This would be the cost basis currently if the uh, company was within its 52-week low. So a lot of times if it hits like Ally, I'll use Ally as an example, right? It's at $28.01. Its 52-week low is $24.81. My cost basis is $25.54. So it would need to either be below my cost basis at $25.54 or below its 15 percent uh, or within 15 percent of its 52-week low for me to add to the position. That's kind of how I, I look at that. So currently I have total shares 3,839.078 shares. Market value is 142,375. My portfolio is currently worth, or I'm sorry, yes, current market value 142,375. I have 143,639 into the portfolio. I am down $1,263.70, 0.88%. So this is gradually creeping up. We're almost about to break even and head back into the green. That's nice to see. But again, with the Fed letting us know if they're going to raise rates this week, if they do, I think that it'll probably drop this back down. We will see. Current yield sitting at 4.901%. My yield on cost, 4.858. And this is what it's all about, whether the market's up, whether the market's down, whether the market is floating sideways. Estimated annual dividend income sits at $6,977.40. This will keep rolling in. And so long as I don't sell out of a position or reallocate, uh, this should continue to grow over time. Uh, if you've been watching for any length of time, you have seen that I've sold out of some positions or reallocated funds, and this will drop, and then we have to make that back up, right? That is just part of uh, redistributing. Whenever you do that, sometimes you lose a bit, a little bit of estimated annual income, but if it strengthens your portfolio over time, don't be afraid to do that. Don't hold the position if it no longer meets your investing criteria, right? Make sure that you cut whenever you've made a mistake and we all make mistakes. That is part of the idea behind this channel. You can learn from my mistakes. I can learn from your mistakes. Share with each other in the comment section below, down below. Don't be afraid of mistakes. It is part of dividend investing. All great investors have made mistakes. If you read any books about the great investors, they talk about the mistakes they've made. Uh, Kraft Heinz, for example, is one that Warren Buffett said he made a mistake. His cost basis is much higher than my cost basis, believe it or not. Right. So you don't have to be perfect to be an investor. Keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and don't let that be a reason to keep you from investing. Now, I'll get off my uh, my soapbox there. Dividend growth currently year over year sitting at 7.99 percent. So the portfolio overall should grow about 8.8 percent as far as the dividend growth. Well, that is it for this one. Really appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done, done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. And like I said, it really does help me out if you hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Help me get to 1,000 subscribers. You cannot monetize a channel on YouTube until you get to at least 1,000 subscribers and have a certain amount of hours viewed. So watch the videos in full. That really does help with the algorithms to spread the message out there, trying to get the word out to people about dividend growth investors, passive income provided by a portfolio like the one you just saw to help people be able to retire early. That is the idea. You can do it. Don't be afraid of investing. I know it, it may be scary whenever you first get started because we were not, most of us anyway, I was not, taught this stuff whenever we were in school. It is something I think should be taught in school. So again, help me spread the word. Join the Vested Interest community. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Really appreciate you all out there. This is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, friends, security comes to those who take aid. Vested Interest. Hey, you have a great weekend and we'll see you in the next one. 
I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion. Investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can lose money. to never invest any amount. Not come from losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, select criteria, or seek the advice of counsel. A certified financial advisor.